Hi, my name is Ted and welcome to my YouTube channel which is dedicated to astronomy and astroimaging. Uh, today I'm just going to be doing a review on a product I received in the mail uh, two days ago. And I'm also just going to be giving a little update of some future stuff that I plan to be doing and things like that. So with that being said, uh, today I'm going to be reviewing uh, Bob's Knobs. <laughs> yes, I know the name sounds a little weird the way it's spoken or how it's said. Uh, but I, I picked these things up for my particular Newtonian telescopes because I, I feel that if you own one of these, you'll know what I'm talking about. The collimation screws on these are used, uh, they're Allen keys or Allen screws. So you need a really tiny Allen wrench to, to loosen them up and adjust the mirrors and stuff like that. Same thing with the back. You have to unlock it with the Allen key and then there's a screw. So you have to use a screwdriver to do that. That part's not so bad, but using the Allen keys is really, really bad because you have a, you really risk stripping them, which in, in my case, I did on the front one because I wasn't in properly and it was kind of slanted and it wound up stripping one of the Allen screws inside the front mirror cell thing there. So I find it very, very annoying. And that's kind of one of the things I actually hated about this telescope because they use the cheapest products and they're so freaking tiny that it makes it make collimating it very, very hard and, and, and things like that, in my opinion. You know, some people, they don't care. It's, it, they, it's a breeze for them. For me, it's annoying. And the same thing with the back. Um, there's the, the collimation screw and the locking uh, screw is so close together that it's very hard sometimes. And at first I didn't even know which one was which, you know, cause you can't even really see if you look behind the thing, you know? So um, it made it very hard to collimate it. So I wanted to swap it out. So I got the Bob's knobs and it makes it so much more convenient. Um, if you can't see the three little knobs on here, I'll take a, I'll show you a picture up close here. And the same thing with the back. The back has two of them. The longer one, which is the red one, is the locking screw. And the three smaller ones, the black ones, are the collimation screw. And as you see, they're very close together. And this is the same thing for Skywatcher telescopes. I'm almost certain um, they have the same setup. Because they're, they, I think they use the same tube and things like that. So very hard sometimes to collimate. So the knobs makes it so much more easier. It makes it a snap. It really does. It's, it's so much more convenient. The back ones, the front ones were easy to change. The back ones were a little harder because in between the mirror cell and the frame is a rubber washer. Um, the first one fell down, so I had to use two of these small tiny screwdrivers to pull it up. Uh, but then I found when I used a flat one on the neck, the, the following two, is I hold the rubber seal up there while I pull out the collimation screw. And then I put it in, because it has to go naturally, so it's a washer, so it has to be in place. So, but also again, what was in there before? I'll show you. I'll show you a picture of what was in there before. If you don't already know what's in there, I'll show you a close up of that. Um, again, these Allen keys are ridiculous. Uh, not to mention they are the smallest ones possible in the Allen wrench key uh, set. So, um, and one of the things I also got mad at Celestron was is you're paying twelve hundred dollars for a scope. You would think they would make it a little more convenient. Like my Jumel and some of the Orion telescopes, they have little knobs, collimation knobs on them, which makes it so much more convenient. Uh, but you would think they at least supply one of these Allen keys. Or the, well, there was two different sizes. This was a smaller one than this one, like two sizes up on the back one, which is annoying. But yeah, this is Bob's knobs. They're really, really nice. Um, definitely worth the money. Uh, again, it will make your column and your telescope so much more convenient and easy. So with that being said, um, as most of you know, if you haven't already seen my video of Mars and Saturn, um, my newest one, um, I'll put a uh, link in the description below so you can see it. I've been testing out the telescope's uh, magnification limits. Uh, most of you all know I don't like shooting uh, the projection method. I like to basically shoot prime, which is attaching my camera directly to the telescope. And what I, one of the things I do love about this telescope is it's a thousand millimeters. So it makes it kind of, it's in between, you know, this one's 663 for this little refractor, but the thousand I think is actually perfect. Uh, so what I like to do is I take my camera, I do it two ways and I kind of did it two ways. And first way was putting a, 
I took my Canon camera and I took a times two teleconverter from Kenco. And I have my T-ring on here already, but I basically connected on there, giving this telescope now 2,000 millimeter focal length. The borrow lens, when you use the borrow lens, for some reason, it, it kind of starts to make the image go a little blurry. Uh, but with the teleconverter, you still get the high quality because this is an actual real good glass, uh, you know, as your uh, magnificate, your times two uh, glass inside there. So it makes it really, really nice. Um, I also took advantage of the Canon's built-in digital zoom feature. Um, you have the digital zoom between three times and ten times. Um, in my video, you'll see I kind of label it too. How I, I went in increments three times, uh, six times, you know, seven times, eight times, ten times, um, just to kind of get a feel of what you can get. And of course, naturally, the closer I got, the more blurry it became as well. Uh, but still, it was still nice to see. It wasn't like super blurry where you couldn't notice any, like especially on Saturn's rings, you you can still see the rings. It was really really nice. The second way I did it, I wanted to go a little farther with magnification. I I, I took it my extension tube with the barbell lens and my times two teleconverter and I um, put it into the 1.25 eyepiece adapter and did it that way now giving it four times so the barbell lens already doubled this by 2,000 millimeters into you know two times and then of course the teleconverter now magnifies that to four times so I had a 4,000 millimeter scope here at an f5 so it was really really nice um and again i thought it was pretty good i was able to get really really super close to the mars and saturn uh i will also provide a link uh to my Flickr account so you can see some of my pictures uh, that i actually taken from those two videos and that i process in uh reggie stack six and also process them in tiff and dfx so you can see how close i was able to begin you can see the really fine detail what even as blurry as some of those images were i mean uh, the videos were so that's kind of pretty much it for that uh, as also you know mars is going into opposition on july 31st um, some people I'm seeing in some sites, it's saying July 27th. So I'm kind of gathering between July 27th and 31st. It's going to be moving in closer and closer uh, until it's at full opposition on the 31st. That's the only way I can take it. So, uh, But I'm hoping to have clear skies uh, on those, at least that last part of the week. Um, the last day I had clear skies was on July 13th when I took video of Mars and Saturn. So hopefully... You know, I mean, it's kind of raining out there now or cloudy, so I won't uh, have anything for the next day or two. But uh, keep my fingers crossed and thumbs up if, if we get some clear skies. Um, if not, I hope you guys have some clear skies so you can take some video images of Saturn and Mars and things like that. So, um, and that's pretty much it. So, uh, there's not much more I can say. That uh, I do have a something I do have coming in the mail here pretty soon that I'll probably end up doing a review. I'm not sure yet. Uh, and that's pretty much it, guys. So as always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, share my channel, and uh, hope you guys have clear skies. Thanks, guys.